In this video, we're going to talk about exponential functions. So what exactly is an exponential function? And then we're going to look at graphing a few exponential functions. So what is an exponential function? I'm glad you want to know. An exponential function is a function of the form f of x equal b to the x power. So what is different about this function than all the other functions we've seen is that now our variable is in the exponent. So if you recall, before we saw functions like f of x equal x squared, which is a quadratic function, notice our variable was the base, or the number that was being raised to the exponent. This time, our variable, the thing that's changing, is the exponent. So we're changing the exponent each time. And so b is called the base. That's our base, and our base has to be bigger than zero, and our base also cannot be equal to one. And it is a real number. So um, b is the base, x is the variable that is being changed. And so this is an exponential function. And here are some examples, f of x equal 3 to the x. As long as the variable is in the exponent, it's an exponential function. Um, f of x equal 1 half to the x. f of x equal 3 fourths to the x. All of these are examples of exponential functions. And so let's look at graphing a couple of them. So for example, one, we want to graph f of x equal 2 to the x. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to do use a t-trap. So that means we're going to pick um, x values and plug them in and figure out what the y values are. I'm going to pick my favorite five, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We're going to plug these in for x to figure out what the y value is that correspond to those x values. So if I plug in negative 2, I get 2 to the negative 2 power, and whenever you have a negative exponent, recall that you flip it and write it as the reciprocal, or you flip that fraction, you flip the base of 2, it becomes 1 over 2, and then your exponent becomes positive. So that's 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. If you plug in negative 1, you get 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 over 2 to the first power, which is 1 half. If you plug in 0, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. If you plug in 1, you get 2 to the first power, which is 2. And if you plug in 2, you get 2 to the second power, which is 4. Now, plugging in these numbers gives us 5 points on the graph. So now, when I get ready to sketch the graph, I'll just plot those points. So I have negative 2 1 fourth which is 0.25 so it's going to be between 0 and 1 negative 1 1 half which is a little bit higher than 0 0.25 0 1 1 2 and then 2 4 so my graph ends up looking like this so it's a curve and there's a few things we want to talk about with this curve so if you notice if I was walking on this graph, I would be going up the whole time. I would be increasing. So this is an increasing function, and therefore it's called an exponential growth function. You get an exponential growth function anytime your base is bigger than 1. So whenever the base is bigger than 1, in our case our base is 2, you're going to end up with a growth function, a function that's increasing the whole time. Another thing is that this x-axis is serving as a horizontal asymptote. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 0. And if we were to look at the domain and range of this function, your domain would be negative infinity, and it keeps going to positive infinity. And the range would be, since this x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, that means this graph is going to get really close to y equals 0, but it's not going to touch y equals 0. And so therefore, the graph starts at 0 um, without including the 0, and it keeps going on up to infinity. So your range will be 0 to infinity. And so this is the graph of y equal 2 to the x, which is an exponential function. It's an exponential growth function. It has a domain of negative infinity to infinity, a range of 0 to infinity, and also a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. For example, two, we want to graph f of x equal 1 half to the x power. Again, this is an exponential function because the variable is an exponent. And so we're going to graph this again by using a t-chart. So again, I'm going to pick my favorite 
five x values and I'm going to plug them in for y or plug them in for x to figure out what the y value is. So one half to the negative two. So remember the negative exponent means you take the reciprocal of one half, which is two to the first, and then your exponent becomes positive. So this is two to the second, which is four. One half to the negative one, you do the same thing. Take the reciprocal of one half, which is two, then your exponent becomes positive. So two to the first, which is two. Anything raised to the zero power is one. One half to the first power is just one half. And one half to the second power means I raise the numerator and the denominator to the second power. So one to the second is one, two to the second is four. And so that gives me five points on the graph that I am going to plot. So starting with negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 1 half, and 2.25, which is 1 fourth. So this time I have a curve that looks like this. So almost the exact opposite of what the curve looked like in example 1. Now if you were to walk on this graph, you're going downhill. So this graph is decreasing. And so this is called an exponential decay function. You get an exponential decay function anytime your base is between 0 and 1. So whenever your base is between 0 and 1, you have a function that is decaying. Um, also, just like in the last example, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. So we have another horizontal asymptote, and I'm going to put HA for horizontal asymptote and y equals zero. If we was to look at the domain of this graph, your x values keep going to negative infinity and keep going in this direction to positive infinity. So that's your domain. And then your range, again, since this is a horizontal asymptote, it will be from zero on up to infinity, but you don't include the zero because at zero, that's an asymptote, which means it'll get really close to it, but never touch it. Um, and so this is how you graph f of x equal one half to the x. So we graph two exponential functions by using the t-chart, picking five points, five x values, plugging them in and figuring out what the y values are. But because there are three values that will always be on the graph that are easy to remember, we want to look at those three. So and the three points are going to be whenever I plug in negative one, b to the negative one, it's always going to give me the reciprocal of b. Remember, b is the base. Whenever I plug in 0, I always get out 1. And whenever I plug in 1, I always get out b. So b to the 1 is b, b to the 0 is 1. So these are three points that will always be on your exponential function unless you have some vertical shifts or horizontal shifts, vertical shifts or horizontal shifts. If it's just b to the x with no transformations, these three points will always be on the graph. So negative 1, the reciprocal of the base, 0, 1, and 1, comma, b, which is your base. And if you can remember those, you can easily plot your exponential functions fairly quickly. Let's look at another example. So there's a really important number that we use in math called Euler's number, and it's represented by the letter e, lowercase e. And it's approximately 2.71828 and some more numbers. It's actually an irrational number like pi. So remember pi is 3.14. And we rounded it as 3.14, but it's actually a number that keeps going with no pattern. It just keeps going. Um, it doesn't stop. And so Euler's number is the same way. And so we use E a lot, especially when it comes to exponential functions and logarithmic functions, which we're going to talk about after exponential functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph an exponential function involving e. So for example 3, we want to graph f of x equal e to the x. So our base here is e, and so recall that e is approximately 2.718 and some more numbers. Um, since e is bigger than 1, that means our function is going to be an exponential growth function. It means it's going to be increasing. Now also recall there are three points that are always on your exponential function. And so those three points are negative 1, 1 over b, 0, 1, and 1, b. So our b is e. So that means our three points on our graph would be negative 1, 1 over e, 0, 1, and 1 comma e. 
Now, if you look on your calculator, there is an E button. Some of you may not have E by itself. You may have E to a power, but most calculators have an E button and an E to the X button. If you don't have an E by itself, then to get the value of E in your calculator, you will put E to the first power. And that'll give you, so if you just practice now, find E to the first power or E to the X and put E to the first power, and it'll give you the value of 2.1, 2.718, and you'll see the numbers keep going. Um, and so I said that because in order to figure out the value of 1 over E, you have to do 1 divided by E in your calculator. And the value of 1 over E ends up being 0.368. So you get negative 1 comma 0.368. And then 0, 1, we already know what that is. And then we know that E is 2.718. And so if you plot these points, negative 1, 0 0.368. 0 0.368 is between 0 and 1. Not quite half, but a little close to half. 0, 1 is here. And 1, 2.7, which is going to be between 2 and 3. So you're going to end up with a graph, an exponential growth function that looks like that, that goes through those three points. And so this is how you would graph the exponential function. If you wanted more points, you could pick more x values and plug them in. Like if you wanted to plug in 2, you could do e squared, plug it in your calculator, see what the value is, and plot that point. But this is the graph of the what we call a natural exponential function. So anytime the base is e, it's a natural exponential function. Now you try this one. Graph f of x equal 3 to the x. Think about the three points that are always on the graph. Let's pause the video for a moment and graph it. So if you think about the three points that are always on the graph, we will have negative 1, the reciprocal of b, which our base is 3, so the reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. We would also have 0, 1, and then we would have the point 1, comma 3. So if you plot those three points, negative 1, 1 third, 0, 1, 1, comma 3, our base is bigger than 1, so this should be an exponential growth function you end up with the function that looks like that. And so that's the graph of f of x equal 3 to the x. Sometimes your exponential functions can have transformations on them. So if you notice, this is 3 to the x minus 2 plus 4. Our base function here is f of x equal 3 to the x. But we have some additional transformations. So the same transformations we learned about before, they still apply now. They apply regardless of what type of function you have. And so this minus 2 in with the x shifts the graph to the right two units. And then this adding 4 outside of the x, it shifts the graph up 4. So if we think about our three points that are on this graph, our base function, 3 to the x, we had negative 1, 1 third, 0, 1, and 1, 3. Well, shifting the graph to the right two units means we add 2 to each x value. So I'm going to take this graph. So this is the one I'm looking for, 3 to the x minus 2 plus 4. I'm going to take these numbers. I'm going to add 2 to each x. So if I add 2 to negative 1, I get 1. If I add 2 to 0, I get 2. If I add 2 to 1, I get 3. Now, shifting the graph up 4 units means the y values are changing. So now I'm going to add to each y value. So I'm going to start with these at the bottom. They're easier. So add 4 to 1, I get 5. Add 4 to 3, I get 7. If I add 4 to 1 third, I need to have a common denominator. And so that common denominator would be 3. So multiply top and bottom by 3, and I get 1 third plus 12 thirds, which is 13 thirds. Or you could say that's 4.33 repeating. And so now I want to plot these points. These are the points on the graph of what I'm looking for. So if I sketch a graph and plot those points, so 1 comma 4.33 is going to be about right here. 2 comma 5 is here. And 3 comma 7 is here. So um, our x-axis was our um, horizontal asymptote with the base function. But since we added 4, meaning we shift the graph up 4, then now our horizontal asymptote also shifts up 4. 
So now our horizontal asymptote will be here at y equal 4. And that's important to know because I'm going to have an exponential growth function because my base is still bigger than 1. But now it's going to get really close to the line y equal 4. It's going to get really close to it but not touch it. And so this is what the graph of 3 to the x minus 2 plus 4 looks like. So you have the graph of 3 to the x shifted to the right 2 and up 4. And so this is how you graph exponential functions. This is how you evaluate exponential functions by plugging in the x value and figuring out what the value, the y value is. If you have any questions whatsoever, make sure you include them in the comments below. If this video helped you, make sure you hit that like button. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Until next time, I will see you in the next video.